Hi, and welcome to the Good Luck Electronics Big Extra Series, covering topics that sit outside the pick tutorials. In this video, we'll take a look at Microchip's new Picket 4 and Snap Programmer debuggers. Since I first started making the baseline and mid-range pick tutorials, Microchip have introduced a few new pick programmers. The Picket series are low-cost programmers that can also be used as debuggers, which are intended mainly for the hobby or maker market. They're designed to connect to the PIC while it's still in the target circuit, using a protocol called In-Circuit Serial Programming, or ICSP. The Picket 2 is Microchip's first standalone low-cost programmer. The Picket 1 doesn't count, because it was a dev board. The Picket 2 is really good. It had some nice features that later Picket still don't. And you could buy cheap clones that work pretty well. But it's only supported on the old MP Lab, not the new MP Lab X. And it can only be used with older PICs. So it's no longer recommended for the Google Gun Pick tutorials. The Picket 3 also works pretty well, and it's faster than the Picket 2, which is quite important when you're programming or debugging larger picks. It's still a good choice of programming small picks, and it can program some that the Picket 2 can't. It's also fully supported by MP Lab X. So it remains a recommended programmer for use for the baseline and mid-range pick tutorials. The Picket 4 is much faster again. And it can be used to program and debug a much wider range of processes. Not only PICs, but ARMs too. To accommodate other programming protocols, the connector was expanded from 6 pins to 8. But if you're programming a PIC, you can just ignore the extra couple of pins. The first 6 pins are a standard ICSP connection. And they can be used directly with existing boards, such as the Gulagun Baseline PIC training board. The PICKIT 4 plugs straight into the ICSP header, in exactly the same way as Picket 3, with the arrows marking pin 1 aligned. Use the supplied micro USB cable to connect the Picket 4 to your PC, and you're good to go. The newest member of the Picket family is the Snap, a cost reduced version of the Picket 4. As you can see, it's a bare board, and it doesn't come with a micro USB cable. You have to supply your own. More importantly, it's missing a couple of features. Significantly, unlike the Picket's, it can't provide any power to the target circuit. Now that's not usually a problem because your circuit would normally include its own power supply. But it means that if you just want to program a PIC on a breadboard, you have to power it separately. Another important difference is that it only supports low voltage programming. The traditional way to put a PIC in a programming mode was to place a high voltage, 12 volts or so, on the VPP pin. The SNAP can't do that, so it has to use a low voltage method. And the downside of that is that your program can't use CMCLR, or reset pin, as an input. That's a big deal on small picks. For example, the 12F1501 has only 6 I.O. pins, and one of those can be configured as either an external reset, or the digital input pin, RA3. But if you're using a SNAP programmer, you have to configure that pin as MCLR. So you can't use RA3, and only have 5 digital inputs available instead of 6. Partly because of that, the SNAP doesn't support any of the baseline PIC devices, nor the original mid-range PICs. Only the newer enhanced mid-range and more advanced PICs are supported. That means that if you use the baseline and mid-range PIC training board with the SNAP programmer, you'll be limited to the enhanced mid-range lessons. The SNAP plugs into the ICSP header, as usual, with the arrows aligned. And you'll need to plug in a micro USB cable and connect it to your PC. But unlike the PIC kits, the SNAP can't supply any power to the board, so you'll also need to connect a DC power supply to the barrel connector on the PIC training board. We've seen that if you use a SNAP programmer, your program can't use any digital input that's shared with the MCLR pin. There's a similar issue that affects both the PIC kit 4 and SNAP, which makes it harder to use the other two programming pins. They're called either ICSP DAT and ICSP CLK, or PGD and PGC, but either way, on small PICs, those pins are also used for other functions, such as digital I.O. For example, on PIC-12s, the programming pins are GP0 and GP1, or RA0 and RA1. The programmer has to take control of those pins while it's programming the PIC. The problem is that the PIC-Kit 4 and SNAP programmers don't release control when they're finished, making it impossible to use those pins for anything else, as long as the programmer remains connected. Now that's true as of MP Lab X version 5.05, at the time I'm making this video in October 2018. Now maybe it's a bug that Microchip will fix in a future update. 
But at the moment, it means that you lose the use of another two IO pins, unless you unplug the program after programming. That doesn't sound so bad, but it's a real pain to have to keep unplugging the programmer while you're developing code. On the other hand, you could use a debug header, like these, which replaces the pick in your circuit. And that way, you don't lose any pins while you're debugging. But it's still not great to have to do that if you're only programming. To show you what I'm talking about, here's a 12 1501 programmed to blink three LEDs connected to the RA0, RA1 and RA2 pins. With the picket 4 connected, only RA2 is blinking. When I unplug the programmer, RA0 and RA1 start working. Plug it back in, and they stop again. It's not ideal. Configuring a picket 4 in MPLAB X is pretty similar to configuring a picket 3. If it's plugged in, it'll appear under Hardware Tools in Project Properties. You can see that I also have a picket 3. If I select the picket 4 and click Apply, the picket 4 options become available. As with the picket 3, there are a number of option categories. There's usually no need to change the memory section. I don't know why Preserve Memory Range shows an error by default. Probably a bug, but anyway, it works okay like this. Program Options lets you select High or Low Voltage Programming Mode, and it also lets you choose the programming speed. You won't notice a difference on a small pick, but for big ones, and if you like living on the edge, you can try high speed. Or if programming fails, try low speed. The power options are the same as for a picket 3. You can choose to power the target circuit and what voltage to supply. Note that it's limited to 50 milliamps though. If you're using the Snap Programmer, the configuration options are much the same. There just aren't as many of them. The Snap can't supply power, so there are no power options. The program options are a bit more limited. In particular, you can't select high voltage programming. But you still get to choose different programming speeds, whichever programmer you're using you can go ahead and make your project and program it into the PIC in the same way as usual. I'm intending to put together some video tutorials for enhanced mid-range PICs, modified as far as practical to work around the SNAP programmer's limitations. See you.